Clear the Wild with Matt Becker, John Norris, and Greg Shaley. There. Hello. Does that work? Hello. Hello. How are you? Fantastic. Greg Shaley. Hey, John. <laughs> this we is made weird. It. Yeah, we usually kind of feather into all three of us being on the air. <laughs> Not today. Not today. You're you're okay. there. Did... Becker just left us. So I oh. don't know where he went. All right. Well, I got to do a <laughs> slight adjustment on the audio, but that's fine. Let's see here. How are you, John? I am very well. Hey, we just got a box from Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, we got this package. God damn, that took a looking package. That took a long time. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, with all the alerts and missile attacks, you got <laughs> to figure it in. It's hard to get supplies out of Hawaii right now. Yeah. Well, hey, open it up because I'm a little hungry let's, and there's something I've been wanting to, to eat on the air with you guys. John, John, crack, do, you, do you have a knife? Yeah, let me crack. Let's crack this open for the very first time. <laughs> for the radio. Yeah, we set that. We found. We found something. We. I was. Oh, got it. I got it. Oh, Becker used yeah. his teeth. He got it open. Oh my oh. god! I think I done it. The can of spam. Oh, oh this is full of good stuff. Oh, it's got a card. Let's read the card. Matt and John. Uh, Mali Kaliki Maka. Am I saying that right? I don't Greg? know. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure it wasn't spelled right. I think they have a street named that. <laughs> uh, Happy New Year. Some island treats to enjoy on a podcast. Your pals, Greg and Tracy. Tracy. Yes. May you have the best Christmas, Christmas ever. ever. That is great. When was it postmarked? Way after, Chris, way after Christmas. <laughs> I think okay. It, no, well, I'm just sure. You thought we were Russian Orthodox. I get <laughs> it. So the card was on sale. They were. This is a half price Christmas card. Yeah, come on. I'm not dumb. Uh, so it's got a bunch of stuff in here. The it's got some dust. What is that? Weird uh, brown dust. Some crack. They look, they're just crackers. Lavash. No, no, not, now, Okay, open those. Those are Hawaiian tropical lavash, and it's furikake, which is a uh, a savory spice that we use in Blue Apron on the uh, Stano's podcast. When we sometimes we've uh, we've had that in one of the dishes. I have no idea what this tastes like, but uh, I've got a pack here. I'm opening, and uh, okay, I have no idea. I, I know that furikake is a savory spice or a, a, something they add to if fish. Can Becker eat this? He has dietary restrictions. I yeah, think there's just... sugar and there's wheat flour. Sorry. That. English wheat flour, barley flour. I can have wheat flour. Uh, you know what? Oh, it's uh, once is, again, it's is, one of these like just a little sweet, but not too sweet. Yeah. No, it's good. Like it's it's I mean, less sweet than like a graham cracker. Would yeah, exactly. Yeah, just a Hawaiian graham cracker with for a cocky. Is oh. Hawaii famous for its crackers? I've never had a Hawaiian cracker. They're before. famous for the full cocky. <laughs> I think I don't know, man. Because blowfish like, juice. <laughs> well, we did the uh, we had that other stuff we ate on the air. I ate on the air, which had a. Mm. It wasn't a very sweet uh, bun, but it had like a it, it had a little bit of a sweetness. But the um, oh no, I, that, that was one I ate without you guys. Sorry, <laughs> I had a treat oh, without you guys. Yeah, sorry, we 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 love guinea pigs. But it, I, it was it was one of these things where I'm like, this has got to be a thing out here because it's a, a local bakery, Standard Baking, that did the uh, the uh, snail. What was that thing called? The sna- oh yeah, snail trail. The sna- no, yeah. snail bun or whatever. The cream, the cream snail. Oh, green snail. snail yeah. yeah. So Standard Baking is a local bakery out there, and this other thing I got was just a point of sale at the at the Shell station. Yeah, this is where I got everything, guys. Guys, by by the way, is it a gas station? <laughs> right oh, up the street. But the um. The thing that was great was everything had like a like a dough that wasn't too sweet and the filling wasn't like super sweet. It was just enough and it was great after having a you know a little meal and a little a little something sweet but not too much. I mean we weren't throwing hot fudge on everything. And this uh the lavash I think is right up there. Lavash sounds like it's something else and they've kind of co-opted it Hawaiian tropical style. Yeah. Is, lavash sounds like a like a Jewish cracker. I was going to say no, yeah. no. It tastes like an unleavened uh, vanilla wafer. Oh, man. Really See, like. Everything you're saying, Becker, is right on. The graham cracker and the vanilla wafer, which uh, even adding the, the furikake, which maybe I should just 
just double down and go to the Asian market and get some furikake yeah. and try it straight. It, just just see what they added. Line yeah. up a Becker's nice rail. Becker's reviews are very good. <laughs> I don't know if you know this. Becker used to be a uh, food reviewer, mm-hmm. and he used to be one of those guys who yeah, wears a remember, mask in a nice restaurant. They always say, you know, eat where truck drivers eat. I don't know if that applies to Hawaii because they're only going like four blocks. <laughs> But well, I, I did. Uh, I did. I did get you guys each a uh, a can of spam because they have a, a huge spam section. It's uh, two two whole rows, about six six feet across. Uh, we had the uh, uh, teriyaki spam, and uh, too sweet. I'll tell you right now, just too sweet. So, so in this box, there's uh, bacon bacon spam because I like my meats to taste like other meats. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Portuguese sausage. I believe that's what raped uh, Jodie Foster in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> on the uh, on the pinball machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's exactly. You know, the- cooked, ready to eat, cold or hot. Oh yeah, it's already cooked, John. You're you're aware of that. Yeah. yeah. The problem with the uh, the teriyaki is that the teriyaki is really good. As a, that, that, the sweetness that you get in there with something that's not too salty already. Cause then it's just, a, it's a fist fight in your mouth. And that's, that's the problem with the teriyaki. Now, if I would have maybe put it with something, I put it with eggs, I put it on a sandwich and I ate some raw, did it three ways. But I, uh, the Portuguese sausage is, uh, that's actually a flavor I do like. And the, did you uh, try that one? No, did I didn't. You try that one? I, I got that for okay. you guys. You can, you can let I'm me know. I wonder if it's spicy. The Portuguese sausage will have a little spice, but I'm not, that's the thing is I don't know how much. It'd be good with Etafe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> if she's available, bring her over. <laughs> she don't come here no more. It's very, it's, uh, very low carb. This is, definitely fits my uh, my paleo diet. Oh, great. Yeah. I think the, the cavemen were into spam. The, the, the one thing that I really, like Tracy and I, we ended up buying three cans of them and ate them over there. And I, I sent another can home and I opened it. Uh, we just got back from a small little trip with the with the Stanhope and Bingo and Tracy and I and some neighbors, and uh, I I busted out the can of Hamakua uh, spam flavored macadamia nuts, and uh, oh oh yeah, pop those one. pop those right now, gents, pop those right now. All right, we're doing it. Spam macadamia nuts. Let's see if they're like Lay's potato chips. Eat one. They look. Uh, they have like a pink. There's, spam yeah. dust on that. Yeah. That, that, that says it's working. Wow. I did not expect that. Isn't it good? I mean, is it good? No. 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 <laughs> I like that's it. Ear, that's earwax. <laughs> and like, you know, I, if you, I'd if have you, been less disappointed if springs had flown out in my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, this, this looks like old dental teeth. It kind of feel <laughs> it is very unappealing looking, and then it kind of feels like if somebody had a problem eating macadamia nuts, they would sprinkle this powder on it and be like, "Now you don't want them anymore." No, no. <laughs> that's a weird taste. Do you like that taste, Greg? You like it? I'll tell you what. This is the first time I actually ate them not drunk, and I've oh. I've I've dusted three three of these cans already. <laughs> <laughs> I kept buying them in, in the, at the supermarket. This, these didn't come from the, the shell station. These came from the supermarket. I love mm. them. I still like them, but I like macadamia nuts too. It, that's the thing. Uh, Doug was like, I'm, I don't like macadamia nuts. I, I'll eat spam, but I'm not going to eat that spam flavored nuts. And that's, that's just him. So, well, all right. Mm. You can send those back. What about awesome? No, uh, I'm, yeah. No, they're, they're, I, they're I know what's going to happen. By the end of the fucking podcast, you guys will be, Eating, you'll be licking your fingers and saying, "Yeah, these weren't very good." But where did you get them? We're making, we're making Portuguese spam, lavash, <laughs> macadamia encrusted uh, sandwiches. I could see if I were drunk, I would eat them. Now like, this one's interesting: island onion. Oh, what it, Greg, what's the difference between island onions and uh, mainland? Just a different onion. color powder. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's supposed to be tennis balls in this can. <laughs> Fuck it, cut them up. <laughs> wow, they got the onion down pat. Yeah, turns out that's an actual thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I like the onion ones a lot, a lot more. All right, I think they just after they're done making uh, Pringles, they just yeah. roll the macadamia nuts right behind them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> on the conveyor belt. <laughs> hmm. Wonder yeah. how they get them wet to stick to it like that. <laughs> I think there's probably a, a wetting agent, like just like an oil <laughs> lemurs. They got lemurs, lick them, but won't eat them. 
<laughs> they've been trained. They they uh, they uh, they put a, a string around their throat so so a macadamia nut can't go down. <laughs> they'll learn. They'll learn. Oh, look at that! And also, we also have some wasabi macadamia nut. Oh no! no okay, look. I gotta tell you guys. I gotta tell you guys. That's gonna be our favorite, isn't we, it? We found a hot wasabi that was uh, in the market over there. And we're like, yeah, we'll just get that. This was ass kicking hot, and uh, I believe they have it here in Sierra Vista. If I find it, then uh, I'll uh, send you a picture of the uh, the brand. It is so fucking hot. It's good. I know you guys both like hot, so mm-hmm. those are probably just gonna it's be like, regular. And it's like wasabi hot, where it directly goes up your your nasal passages. Yeah, yeah, like spinal cord stuff. Mm. Yeah, these are yeah. really good. Yeah. So yeah. So it was definitely just the spam dust that we uh, weren't fans of. <laughs> We'd like to reorder. We'd like uh, a, a yeah. case of wasabi nuts. Well, I mean, I, I, maybe you could just uh, rinse off the spam nuts and then uh, and throw the white road and then throw them in. Have your lemur lick them and then throw them in with the powder from the uh, the other cans. The dogs are sitting right here, so we could <laughs> probably make sure work of this. <laughs> <laughs> We could see a cricket. <laughs> Want to try it? Okay. Want to try it like that? You like spam powder? Mm-hmm. Uh, wow. So yeah, yeah. I'm, great. Thank. These are. That I'm, is amazing. I'm excited to try the spams. I would have uh, opened this earlier. You guys saved a lot of money. You just did half of my vacation in Hawaii, right there, eating that. This stuff. is great. We didn't. <laughs> have, we didn't have to order shirts or send out books. I'd have to put any sunscreen on. Mm-hmm. Put a little sand in your crotch and uh, stub your toe, and that's it. You got mm-hmm. it. <laughs> Ah, it's raining again. God damn it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're, we're, uh, we went up to the cabins in Pinos Altos in New Mexico uh, for a couple of days, Tuesday, Wednesday. And that was, uh, yeah, another another bit of uh, everyone relaxing and then me editing a podcast and trying to, trying to get the internet to work. <laughs> what a great vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Once again. In the middle of nowhere. This morning when I'm packing the car, I'm going, ah, I got nothing to do today. Oh, wait, I got to drive for three hours. <laughs> and then do two podcasts because right after this one, we're doing another one with, uh, with uh, Stan Hope. So and my vacation's over, Shaylee. Shut the fuck up. Get your work done. How far away is the uh, place you went? It's, uh, it's about two and a half, three hours. Oh, cool. Yeah, and it's, it's in, the, in the mountains of New Mexico? Yeah, it's uh, 7,000 feet. And, uh, it's, it was, so it was like snowy and stuff. Do you guys? No, no, no. It was it was it was cold, but it, there was no there's no snow. But like like a about less than a mile away, there's a there's a pretty good restaurant and a uh, whiskey whiskey girl and nowhere man used to play there called the Buckhorn. Is actually uh, the place was built in the late 1850s, 1860s, something like that. And uh, yeah, it's still a business. And uh, yeah, it was fun. Just hang out and drink. Did, did, did they have a house specialty? Did they have something that was yes, local? Yes, they to had. Oh, here we go. This is it. Spam. They, no. Green hatch green chili stew. And that is with pork. Uh-huh. So it was delicious. But the first mm-hmm. night we had it, like everyone had like a cup because they, they split it up rather than one big bowl. And uh, I'm like, wow, that is – that's – fuck, that's hot. That's – that should that should come with a warning when they go down. I do I want to tell you, if you haven't had hatch chili, this can be kind of hot. And uh, one of the guys – he. Uh, uh, the, the the couple that moved in next door to uh to Doug, he he he's like you, John and, and Matt. He he eats stuff like super on fire. And he goes, This is about a four. It's about a four. And then after it started to build, he's like, Nah, I'm gonna say a five. I'm gonna say a five. I'm like, Wow, all right. <laughs> so so this is good. This is and I'm I'm like I'm liking it. I ate the whole thing. So the mm-hmm. next day, yesterday, I go, I'm going mm-hmm. back tonight and I'm just gonna get a, a, like a big bowl of that, and then we'll bring it back, and we'll eat it with some bread I made, and we'll, and you know we can make it with eggs and all that stuff. Sour cream, everything, right? Not hot at all. They forgot a <laughs> fucking ingredient. Not, I'm not even kidding. There, it, it must have been not hot Wednesdays because there was nothing in this thing, no heat whatsoever. Oh. Do you think it's like the? Do you think like? <sighs> The chilies are kind of like some some batches are really hot and some aren't. It kind of just depends what chilies got put in. But the guy who's cooking it is following a recipe, and at some point it should say it should say on the recipe, "Oh, and t- test it because it should be hot." This thing was it was temperature hot only. There was no. You think spice. it got the gringo soup? 
I mm. it must have been the it must have been the old lady or maybe they switched it maybe they do catering I don't know but it was really it was uh, hatch chilies have a really really distinctive flavor and it is so good that it, we still everyone ate it it's not like we didn't eat it but I really missed that heat so that's uh that's yes and did green, you did you march it back in there and be like who do you think I am I can handle it give me the five hot <laughs> here's our six empty containers I want them refilled now with some spice. No, we didn't. We didn't do that. We just were too lazy and drunk by that point. But uh, the the hatch green chilies do come in uh, different uh, intensities, John. Definitely. Well, it sounds like the reason you like uh, those macadamia nuts uh, is because you've ruined your taste buds. <laughs> you polluted your taste buds with cocaine. <laughs> the, the spam cocaine. The pink spam cocaine. Hey, did you see that? Uh, that. That thing in Costa Rica, that taxi driver who got busted? No. Uh, <laughs> fly, I don't know him. Flying. <laughs> not, not, you know him. It was in the Costa Rica the uh, in the news. Taxi driver flying from Costa Rica to Dublin. And he had uh, $166,000 worth of jellified cocaine in his suitcase. What jellified cocaine? cocaine. Like, is that in the neck pillow? It, it, <laughs> Did you put it in the neck pillow? That probably that would have been a, a better way to, to take it. it. There were these packages, and it lo- just looks like like a clear like like it looks like saline in a uh, a breast implant. It's, it's like it's clear gel, and then I guess there's some kind of process to uh, to extract the cocaine from that. What did his his profession have to do with him yeah. being a drug runner. That's weird. I, I know how he got to the airport is all you well, told yeah, me. Yeah, that's it's so weird. It's like, well, how is it's it's well, like, an Uber driver arrested yeah. for smuggling drugs. So what happens with this cocaine when it uh you know on a normal day when it reaches its destination in this like liquid gel form where people just like squirt it in their mouth like a gogur or like <laughs> do they turn it back into a powder? I think yeah, I wonder if that gel would work Keeping spam from moving around in the can. Yeah, the packaging. <laughs> yeah, I, I, there's probably a way to uh, to burn off the gel or something to separate it or something. But yeah, I don't know the taxi driver thing, but I don't think – it was probably one of these things where he he just was carrying someone something for someone and he maybe not – didn't even know. I don't know. Yeah, no, that was the whole point of being know. the cab driver. They include that. He goes, it's not like the cabbie put it in your bag. Yeah. He didn't know. <laughs> just like, oh, it's a – a uh, guy I don't even know his name, I never met him before. Asked me to carry all these gel packs onto a plane to Dublin, which I was going to anyway. So yeah. he traded me my cab for this suitcase, heavy suitcase no. that jiggles. You're telling me you've never flown uh, ten hours to a different continent because Ooh. a friend asked you to? Why would they packaged it so it looked like it should be gel? Like did they put it in like shampoo bottles or something? I mean, yeah, if they put it like in a Something that you go. Why is this just gel in a bag? Bottle. Just Ziplocs. Just and it wasn't ca- it wasn't yeah. carry on. This was a checked bag, so it just went through security. And then they, I mean, they've got plenty of stuff going. As those, well, Costa Rica. Let's 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 be let's be honest. Some guy carried it to the plane and said, "Hey, this thing's jiggling." <laughs> oh man! So you're telling me so so the best way to transport this this gel coke is to actually get a woman. With the breast implants in with zippers, so she, with zipper. She's so she's when she's on the plane, she's got like triple D's. Shout out to guy Fietti. Yeah. And and then when she gets off the plane, they're down to like a B cup. John, yeah. you just raised the bar. You've now you've you've really you've you've taken what is happening in reality, and you've just blown minds. These taxi drivers I, are going crazy right now. I'm a get, natural born implant. smuggler, I guess. I know how to do this. And uh, there's I've been no- doing these jello shots, and I just want to <laughs> dance. <laughs> there's nothing to say, John, that you can't get your hack license and breast implants at the same time, and then I- you know make a couple trips to Dublin. Dublin? Why not? Aren't they all Dublin. broke over there? Why the fuck? Who's taking coke? Yeah, I know. Who brings to it to Dublin? Dublin? And not only that, they just they just raided a boat that was coming into Europe. Over in England, it, it it had like the largest amount of cocaine ever. And oh, remember, yeah, it's been, yeah. they've been getting hit with it pure on the streets. So why are they flooding that country with cocaine? Yeah, maybe maybe that's just where they they have cheap uh, labor, <laughs> and then they move it from there. They've got to. Well, this Isn't country it? could use a stimulant. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a stimulant. We've got enough opiates. We're good. Am I talking stimulus up. package or what? Whoa. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 
It must be Will King because Jelly doesn't move like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my that's my only Costa Rica thing. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm fresh out. Amazon Amazon released its uh, finalist for the city they're going to put their headquarters. Was that in. crazy? Anchorage did not make the cut. Well, no, surprisingly, there's no way we can't keep a Sam's Club. But <laughs> <laughs> Amazon think about dropping us as a customer. <laughs> Yeah, you guys but get the, fucked around by Amazon all the time anyway, so why would they even yeah, be in the room? I'm waiting on my three day delivery that I spent a week. But uh <laughs> that you said, pay don't extra worry. For. It's on its way. Yeah. Every time I so whenever I order something from Amazon, I check the like tracking to see where the package is, and it always says it'll be there by eight PM Thursday. And then at like seven fifty nine, uh, if I check it, it'll always say uh, your package is late. Sorry, we don't know where it is. Yeah. <laughs> and then it comes like four days later. The guy shows up wearing the shirt I ordered. Take <laughs> <laughs> a dump in my yard. His UPS shirt's in your box. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it was, uh, but uh, what was the other? Oh, so they, uh, yeah, Newark, New Jersey was on that list. You really are going to move it to Newark? I mean, like I said, most of those people can't get Amazon packages left in their doorstep. <laughs> yeah, they need that exploding box. They go, oh, we have a really good workforce. I go, yeah, I know. As soon as you cut welfare, you'll be fine. Well, I think New, Jer- New Jersey is one of those towns where they give like these like 10 year tax free deals to corporate, uh, like, like to woo corporate, uh, America to, to come set up a shop there. And, 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 and it's one of those things. There's like, what if every, it's once someone makes a dollar hamburger at fast food, everyone has to do it because that's, that's where they've set the bar. And it's kind of fucked up because the corporations should be paying taxes. It, it should be part of the whole fucking deal. And then they're, they're giving it away. And I think New Jersey's one of them. I know Atlanta does that or uh, Georgia does so that for the, the movie you guys, industry. You guys probably know more about this because I only read uh, the first paragraph of any news story. But is it like, it's, is it a shipping center or is it just like uh, – It's a hub. It's going to be – uh, So it's going to be like all of Amazon. Well, they services. have – The Am- one hub's in Seattle, right? Amazon yeah, has geographically data. located hubs all over the country so that you can get yeah. something – like I could buy something at 10 a.m. today and then it will be here tomorrow. And you're like, how the fuck is that even possible? Because there's a that, distribution That is center. literally what I'm saying in my head right now, Greg, because I yeah. live in Anchorage, Alaska. No, and this is in Bisbee. <laughs> he can do this in Bisbee. That's the part that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. No, you guys can't. There's no way. You're still waiting for something you ordered a couple of days ago. But it is one of those things where I've been able to get that, and it's because the – the part or the whatever item I wanted happened to be located n- close enough at one of these distribution centers and it got there before everything went out and the robot picked it up and someone said, yep, that's it. And then it fucking got sent out. And that's why that can happen. And when I was getting they the- have They have a Vegas. I think they have a Vegas distribution center. That's probably the one you're getting stuff from. Vegas is another uh, town where they Does make it Does it have very- glitter on your stuff when you get it? <laughs> It is uh, very attractive to uh, to big companies like that. Zappos is is out of there. They they fucking run that town, and it's because they moved in and they had some really good uh, uh, tax breaks. And that Zappos is another thing where I've gotten I've ordered a pair of shoes in the morning and they were here the next day in Bisbee. But that that's that's the reason that they do these these distribution centers. And if you if you look online, there's uh, someone so a reporter uh, went in and worked at a distribution center for like a month to just report about it. And it's, it's fucking tireless. It is and fucking he was crazy. Like, it sucks. It totally does. I mean, you're running, you have to, you, there's something constantly telling you if you're behind or ahead. And if you get, and, I, it, it's like I government. I much prefer just writing on Twitter all day. <laughs> <laughs> if you, if you find out it's like the military or, or anything in corporate America, if you end up doing your job so well that you stick out, once now you've got a target on your back from everyone else who's just fucking sloughing along. And then also they just set your bar a little bit higher. So, so you got to keep getting to that high mark every time. And that, yeah, that, but they also can tell if you, I mean, it's not hard. If I say we're going to deliver it tomorrow and it doesn't get there, you're the guy. Yeah. John, why didn't you deliver it? I, I, oh, you're fired. Yeah. yeah okay. Fired. Hey, there's 70 guys waiting for your fucking jacket. Give them your vest. <laughs> hour what you knew that when you do you, you you desperately needed this shitty job you were thought you could smoke pot and eat pizza all day well look at how that turned out costco's hiring story of my life costco never hiring no there are now now that everyone from sam's club's going to costco uh i've got a feeling the line is probably longer than they've ever imagined than the snack bar for the dollar pizza 
But, you know, you have to go in there and get a membership now at Costco knowing that you were at Sam's Club. And I guarantee the front desk is all. Oh, uh, no, I got a hack. I oh, got a, welcome back. You can buy. That's check this out. It. Hey, here's here's the hack. This is how you get into Costco without buying a membership. You go and you buy a gift card for Costco. And you can you can buy it just online or you can buy it at, at uh, supermarket stores. But they get those ki- those kiosks where they've got all the different uh, gift cards. So you buy a $50 gift card or whatever. And then you go in, and you don't have to be a member to go in and spend it. A fifty dollar gift card, Greg. That's like that, I know that won't. I, I should have said five hundred dollar. I'm sorry. I meant I meant five hundred. It's only forty rolls of toilet paper, Greg. <laughs> yeah. And they only sell them in eighty eighty count. Yeah. <laughs> so 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 you can just do that. That's actually so do you, brilliant. They don't know what's on it. You could just hold up an expired card. Well, oh yeah, when you walk through, but when you but when you check out, you know you have to show them your. They take your card and uh, your credit your, card. So I that's don't the understand thing. why they make me show them my Costco membership card when I walk in. You agree to that? Really? Yeah. That it's so you can't sense. go in there because if you're a member, they have a way of tracking you. But if you're not a member, they don't want you in there. Well, th- because they want because th- you they make money on that on that admission that admission fee, dude. That that yeah, that mem- the- membership fee is that's a revenue stream for them. You're a member now, but I get part of a gang, John. I guess if you have to show some sort of card to get in, you're less likely to like try to steal from there. I guess that's the thing, uh, because you have to show the card when you get in, and then you also have to show give them their card when you check out. But so it's, it's so spread out; it'd be very hard to shop up there. What, the better idea is to wait till somebody comes out who is a member and just steal their stuff. Yeah. No, yeah. oh, what'd you get? Oh, that looks good. I'll take your card. <laughs> and what size are you? <laughs> I like to wait until they, they're uh, unlocking their car with their cart full of stuff, and then I just run up and push their cart away. Uh-huh. And then to throw off the cops, all you do is hold up your membership card to the person you're robbing, yeah. and they go, I know they were a member. <laughs> they did show me their card when they stole my stuff. I, was uh, Who was the, the precursor to Costco? Was there another Walmart. company? No. no. Uh, there was a warehouse. What was the warehouse? There was a warehouse club. I'm thinking of Home Depot. Home Depot and Home Club were both uh, – it's like Lowe's no, and there, Home Depot now. There was one that did discount produce and stuff and office supply and something. Yeah. And they kind of – they went away or they became – they evolved into Costco. I know in Oregon there's like a place called – I think it's called like Winco and it's kind of like a Costco but it's a different uh, – it's like you have to be a member but it's more like a regular grocery store with like slightly better prices. Oh, yeah. There's there's different uh, membership yeah. stores. But, but I watched – I watched a MASH when I was a kid, and I believe Radar was the beginning of Costco. <laughs> it was the original Costco. People would go, yeah, and he goes, yeah, I can get you 35 sets of shoes for syringes. Radar, Radar O'Reilly's middle name is actually Kirkland. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's a fact. You can't change the fact, John. Check it out. Hey, uh, sad to see the uh, lucky wishbone, the original owner, George uh, Brown, yeah, away. how how old was he? Ninety four. Ninety four. Ninety four. Yeah, see, fried chicken will kill you. <laughs> yeah, Ninety four. <laughs> they they just uh, they just celebrated sixty two years in that location, man. Yeah, I mean insane. that. was always my joke. You know the area, right, Greg? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a it's a shitty area, but it's a great restaurant. And the thing is, I go, that's the last lucky thing that ever happened there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was like I was talking about last week with the eight fat eight in Hawaii. It is one of those things where I drove by Lucky Wishbone. I mean, I lived in Anchorage three different times. I only went to Lucky Wishbone this last time when I lived there with Tracy next next to you uh, in in uh, Airport Heights. There, that was the first time I went to fucking Lucky Wishbone in all the years that I've been going up there. I always drove I don't by it that often because it's so it's uh because it's like down by the jail. It's on like the side of downtown that nobody ever goes to, and then Fairview uh, whenever- is what it's called, Fairview. And it's uh, the edge of Fairview. Yeah. And uh, whenever I go by there, it's when I'm coming back into town and I'm trying to get away from that area. And <laughs> you drive it quickly. All, it's, it's, it's always packed. Yeah. No, it, 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 the reason being is that uh, it's been there for so long. You get tons of loyal customers. But it is great, and the the chicken is great. The burgers are uh, okay. I would I would never have a burger there. I would do the the chicken because that's what they're fucking known for, and their milkshakes. Yeah, well, I mean they don't bring you to the yard, but yeah, they're good. <laughs> <laughs> I did not, I did not expect that uh, that reference. Uh, sorry. They were going through a thousand chickens a week. I guess they still. Oh, at Costco. 
No, a lucky wishbone. Costco does a thousand in oh, a lucky. day. Oh yeah, no, I saw that. That was amazing, isn't it? But yeah, uh, Costco does a huge number of those rotisserie chickens, like, like unbelievable amount. But is a thousand a lot? Because I have been uh, uh, watching too many documentaries about how animals are treated, and uh, so we were at like you go to places like Buffalo Wild Wings, and they just have wings, and you think like how many uh, chickens. <laughs> <laughs> like, did all of these wings come from? I bet it's over. It's a lot. No, but you don't realize. They figured out they give them thalidomide, and they have multiple wings now. Oh, that's that's actually smart. I, yeah. I'm for that. I'm for that genetically modifying chickens to get more wings out of them. So you want – okay, John, just just to let you know, okay, that you shouldn't think like this. This these this is for, for other people to think about. You – are you, you saying are this a foodie. Is how, how you become a communist? John, you're a foodie. You like to eat really super spicy hot wings. You need to concentrate sure. on that. The, the U.S. goes through about 9 billion chickens a year. And, and Costco, we talked about this, uh, was it the last podcast or one before where they're opening a new, Costco's opening a new plant so there'll be even more chickens. Well, yeah, they're, that's 9 billion now, today. But yeah. that, that number keeps going up. Do you think, like less people are eating uh, uh, beef and more people are eating chickens. Like, because uh, America's not getting like that much larger, but I feel like we're eating way more chickens. We are. <laughs> we're, I eat, I eat like at least three chickens a day if I really think about it. <laughs> From head to toe. Yeah. Well, I mean, feet, are you trying to feet, become a sumo you know. wrestler? What's going on over there? Three chickens yeah. a day. <laughs> I'm tearing them apart. <laughs> My neighbors have a coop, and I'm crawling under the fence every day. <laughs> There's actually I was driving, just driving over here to uh, beautiful Alder Street, yeah. and uh, you found on it. on the way in, one of the the neighbors has a chicken coop in their front yard, and it's all decorated with lights and like Tibetan peace flags and stuff. Which I don't, I don't, I guess I don't know much about Tibetan peace flags, but. I feel like the chickens probably think they're at war with whoever is stealing their babies and eating them. <laughs> yeah, but also, the thing that was weird is like, okay, you're Buddhist, then you don't celebrate Christmas, and then they're like, well, we're going to put Christmas lights up because <laughs> you're no longer Buddhist. And I just, I think the chickens have an identity. I'm going to go put a Star David up there. <laughs> they see the prayer flags and it, it, it calms them down, John. Don't, don't let them know that, that they, should be, uh, they should be counting those eggs. If a chicken knew how to count, he'd go fucking crazy. Just like you, John. Don't count how many chickens are killed every day. Luckily, I'm bad at counting. Yeah. But you know what? We live on the green belt, and these people have these chickens, and chicken hawks ate them yeah. last year. They ate some of them. But my thing is, I wouldn't eat anything that the wildlife here wouldn't eat. <laughs> I mean, there's tons of – we got red foxes. We got everything. And your chickens are fine, so that means they're unedible. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot to go on with those chickens. They're, they're, they're magnificent creatures. And uh, I feel like Alaska is like a tough enough place to live without inviting predators into your front yard. Yeah, you right. really yeah, you ring the doorbell. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Dinner bell, not a doorbell. Jesus, it's, it's like Jurassic Park when they chain up that goat for the T Rex. Like you just <laughs> like <laughs> in your front yard, you're definitely gonna have a bear in your yard. A T Rex would. It, I doubt that the goat would even register to a T Rex. A T Rex is used to eating a fucking thing the size of a Volkswagen bus. That would that would seem like a pain in the ass. That'd be like like a third of a pistachio nut for you. It'd be like a macadamia nut covered in spam. <laughs> Just a little one. Be a nice little treat. You didn't say the goat had spam dust on it. He's got spam dust all over. That's how they get him in Jurassic Park. It might be an entree. We don't know. Did dinosaurs have entrees? I don't know. Bocas? Did they have a boca? I don't know if you know this about that spam dust. It's actually uh, created in the same lab they create the dinosaurs in because it's irresistible to them. <laughs> this is highly scientific. And then they put this cocaine jelly on top. Oh, <laughs> it's oh, to die man. from. Yeah. Get enough. <laughs> Speaking of uh <laughs> racing through sketchy parts of town, I did see in the in the Anchorage Daily News, which I know since you guys live in Anchorage. Why can't you ever talk about your crime? <laughs> Why is it always us? Why is it always us? Well, which I have a crime. I have a uh, something I should have talked about last week. I have a, a crime that I didn't bring up and I should have. Oh, go ahead. Bring uh, it up. So uh, my girlfriend's car was stolen out of our driveway. <laughs> uh, and this was 
New Year's weekend? The weekend no, it was, New it, was Year's? The, it was the week I was sending the package with all the, uh, the Hawaiian treats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I told, told Tracy, and she goes, hold on a second, because she keeps up more on Facebook and Twitter than I do. And she goes, hold on. I don't think John lives in a good neighborhood. They just stole <laughs> her car out of the driveway. <laughs> and I thought, it was. I don't know where to send it I for mean, Becker. <laughs> we do live we live technically we live in Muldoon, which is uh historically not a great neighborhood to live in. Yeah. But I thought we were safe. You know, it never it'll never happen to me. We lived in a little uh condo uh enclave and now uh the crime has struck home and crime has struck, but parking is a lot easier. Yes. <laughs> the car was recovered very quickly. Anything wrong learned... anything wrong with the car? Guess where it was found. <laughs> Mul- all right, Fairview. <laughs> <laughs> at, the, at the Lucky Wishbone in the drive-thru? <laughs> no, the trailer park over there oh, by uh, Northway Mall. That's two on the nose. Oh, well, I know which one, no. yeah. Right over by the fire they, department, they, yeah. Yeah, they went through some stuff, but there was nothing really worth taking. Uh, but um, it was found, like, I guess a cop, before it was even reported stolen, like a cop had seen it and was like, well, the doors are wide open and people are just coming and going from it, so that's suspicious. But oh, yeah. it wasn't reported <laughs> stolen. So as soon as the report is stolen, they were like, "Yeah, we have it." <laughs> yeah. Hey, that guy's wearing dance shoes. <laughs> <laughs> some black jazz shoes on. I guess that's how you have a garage sale when you don't have a garage. You just open the four but, four doors on the car. <laughs> yeah, go take what you want. <laughs> they did. They did. Uh, whoever stole it left a garage door open. And uh, we were, you know, and we in our neighborhood is like it'd be a weird place for somebody to like walk, just walk through looking for a car to steal. So we thought maybe it was like an inside job. So I nervously like walked around my neighborhood, like trying the garage door open or seeing if any garage doors oh, would yeah, open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe some. Not kids. sure what I would do at that point if like somebody was in the garage. <laughs> I guess I would probably just like run away. Well, John, but, uh, John, they. They may have ripped off someone else's car and took the garage yeah. door opener and then left Damn. it behind. I John's mean, acting like the victim yeah. of the victim to somehow be the person who did it. He's fucking Rambo, <laughs> just <laughs> just indiscriminately shooting his fucking gun. Brrr, kill them all. <laughs> what, yeah, but yo, that's it. What John doesn't realize when that garage door goes up, he goes, they stole my car. They're not taking anything else. Bam. <laughs> John's laying there dead. The cop shows up and goes, didn't his girlfriend have her car stolen this morning? <laughs> close, close. It was uh, it was boyfriend stealing cars in the neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it didn't open. It didn't open any garage door. So uh, that's so just now hey, John. That. Now you're the sketchy guy driving slow and clicking the clicker. The oh, I was walking. Clicker. I was deep in driving. I was just I was like literally walking to each house and like. In the the oh, opener, in it. cops are busy asking if you have an alias. <laughs> you know what they're they're doing down, uh, not in your area, but it's uh, downtown down the hill there, uh, where Beans Cafe and Brother Francis Shelter is. The cops and the fire department, well, not not the cops, more it's the fire department, EMT, and uh, social services are just like posting up now. In that area. Yeah, our city dollars are being used yeah. to, to oversee the, the local dance down at the homeless shelter. I thought it was it was like, wow, that's a pretty good idea. Hold on a second. This is the fucking this is the city that can't even af- afford to buy any more cops. They don't have the budget for either cops or fire department, not both. Not at the prices we're paying. Yeah, and then now they're just posting them up down there where like they should take care of like what's the root of this? And uh it it is really just they're they're basically cutting out the middleman which is the phone call to report a problem yeah. at beans cafe and at brother well, friends and, shelter. well before they were saying there was like three thousand calls a year like of like having to send people to beans cafe so like i mean at what point are you just like all right stop calling we're here like we're already here no but this is they're using our city to, i mean meanwhile you're getting robbed all over town there you go. Well, we know who didn't do it. These guys. <laughs> we, we've been watching we've them all been watching day. Them. <laughs> hey, you got any more of that soup? That's good. <laughs> I, I don't think we ever actually expected them to catch who stole the car. Uh, because, it, I mean, because they, they were just like, uh, yeah, well, the car was clean. So we got fingerprints off of it, which just oh. made me laugh because it reminded me of that scene in the big lebowski and he's like yeah we have our best men on it they're working <laughs> overtime down at the station it's fucking <laughs> anchorage alaska in the dead of winter we've got fingerprints who the fuck <laughs> meanwhile 
like two blocks away, like there was like like three people were shot. Like, yeah, I'm sure they're really trying to yeah, crack yeah. this. We're up. on it. Or, we're on it. They know what they're driving. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but don't worry, now I have a... So I have they a, hotwire the car? I never did ask you that. Oh, no, well, it was... Wait, a, go ahead, tell me. It was... <laughs> how'd, they, how'd they pull off this massive crime? I will say, it wasn't It wasn't exactly the Thomas Crown affair. It wasn't <laughs> like a, a, a skilled bank robber. Uh, it's a Jeep, so it's already falling apart, and uh, the key was stuck in the ignition. Oh, uh, handy. And the car was open. So I think it was just somebody trying to like steal stuff out of a car out of a car and then was like, Oh, jackpot. And then just like drove home. Oh, <laughs> now what I, and I'm being fair here. The box was open when John brought it over. Yep. And I'm wondering, did, did they open the box and go through? The- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I noticed these are all Hawaiian foods. They chose not to eat. <laughs> Could it have been Simone who did this? <laughs> oh, those, I feel like those spam academias would be gone. <laughs> But uh, I do have a security camera now because now I, well, now that the car's already been stolen, I've decided to get serious about security. Have we taken the key out of the ignition? <laughs> no. Step yes. one. Actually, yes. <laughs> are we locking the door? No, yeah, we are we locking ignition. the door? The doors are locked. No. I can I can even show you. Oh. Uh, I have my security cam. His security cam. It's a baby monitor, actually. But I still need to. I still need to mount it so I can also see my. Blakey, car. Blakey is not a security <laughs> camera. So uh, that's a <laughs> baby Bjorn security camera. <laughs> uh, hey, is is the uh, Jeep a soft top? What's up? Is it is the Jeep your your gal pal's uh, uh, vehicle? Is it a a, a soft top? Uh, no, it's a, it's okay. a Jeep like a cher- Grand oh, Cherokee. Oh, Cherokee. Thing. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I'm just. Pictures. They don't like to be called Cherokee. <laughs> red face, a, pale face. It's a Jeep no, red first face. Easterner. Well, that's uh, yeah, that's that's um, that's disturbing. I've 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 had my car broken into once that I know of, and uh, it was at a place a, a place that I worked, and it was in the parking lot. It was a it was a an area that is uh, it, it, it's a what are they like a corporate like a corporate thing like they had a bunch of buildings you know and stuff like that it wasn't a high traffic area so these guys just went along the back where all, all the employees parked and just rifled was this shit. an outback steakhouse no it wasn't. Hilton? no Hilton garden i work for a uh i work for a uh plumbing company so we're so i get back late and i go in there and i go motherfucker how did that happen and i look and my ashtrays dumped out on the ground i go how did like and the first thing i say is how did i do that like I, I just didn't think. <laughs> I left the car open, and it was a uh, it was a Nissan Sentra, and the back, I had my guitar, uh, a, a Telecaster, sitting back there. Why the fuck I would be rolling around with a fucking guitar in there? And you never know when a gig. Some guys, yeah, some just, guys can't hey, talk to girls. Hey, so, <laughs> 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 so I I looked there and I immediately go back there. This guy flipped open the ashtray and like picked through like to get change, right? Because there's only like there's only buttons and, and paper clips left. So I go, what the fuck? And then which, I go, are, which is a trade? Which yeah, that's easily trade. And I go, what the fuck? And I go, I run into the back, lift it up. There's a leather jacket and a guitar. I mean, instant rock star right there. And uh, yeah, those bo- both of those are uh, highly sought after at the pawn shops. And uh, didn't look in the back, so. I, but I felt wow. very violated. And what did I lose? Maybe eighty cents in. You was know. there? Did you smoke back then? Did I smoke? No. Yeah, you said the ashtray was full of ashes and shit. All poured out. No, no. They they, they dump the ashtray. The the, okay. the the one they don't have you the cars candy anymore. Dish. They used to have yeah, <laughs> the gum saver. You know, <laughs> the the, ash, the cars don't come with they ashtrays don't anymore. Bell receipts and change. My yeah. roach tote. <laughs> But it was one of those things where, like, it, I I lost nothing. I I felt lucky for the dumb mistake of leaving, and it was a a, a crime of opportunity. They just check doors. They check doors all the time. They yeah. being the criminal. I left element. my. I drove a a a shitty Kia for a little while in the in my string of uh, shitty automobile choices, and uh, left it when I used to work at a. Uh, uh, La Bodega, best best beer and wine slash beer store in the entire world. I left my car in the parking lot. That's like the side parking lot overnight, and it's back by where the cardboard recycling is, which is a known place for homeless people like sleep in the cardboard recycling. That's thing. their ho- that's that, their warehouse. Well, yeah, that's their, that's, that's Home, home Depot home. for homeless people, dude. And I left my <laughs> I left my uh, car there overnight, thinking you know it would be fine. 
it doesn't lock. I actually had to, I couldn't even actually open the door. Like I had to have like a shoelace coming up the top through the window to pull the door from the inside to get in. <laughs> and uh, this was a free car. And uh, so I just thought like, well, I mean, if they go in, there's nothing in there to take those open and look around. They're going to have sex in it. <laughs> that makes fun of us. At least I'm glad that car is seeing some action. <laughs> Uh, it, it literally you can have sex in it. Just pretend like you're sleeping. But I, came, I came. I came back the next day, and instead of instead of just like opening open doors, somebody smashed in the back window to get into it, which was a real bummer because uh, I had to I had to give away my free car because I wasn't about to replace that window. <laughs> yeah, I, that, those uh-huh. are the things I don't like, and and uh, a lot of times uh, in Hawaii, my brother he's, he's been going back there for 10 years now and he goes we would get a uh, a jeep a soft side a soft top jeep and he goes we would just leave uh the doors open and it, we would take everything to the beach with us but we just leave it open because we don't want to pay the damages because they'll just they'll just slash the window the, the, the plastic open to get in there and i noticed that at a lot of uh beaches out there the locals will just leave their cars the, the window down because that's, that's really... Uh, no, that's what they tell you to do in Costa Rica. Leave yeah. the windows down. That's when they were breaking into our trunk. Because, but, yeah, well... Break, I would say the beach is not covered in box openers. It's covered in rocks. <laughs> I would still break that window. Yeah, but if the window's <laughs> down, they reach in and open the door. And then they go, wait a minute. If he already left the door open, basically the window down, the door's open. What, what could be in here? The, the, yeah, the my short days card? of having a Jeep are over. I had one when I was in Arizona, and that was I realized it was a mobile parts station. <laughs> Every time I come out, there's something missing. I'd be like, "What are you doing?" And they're like, "Oh, sorry, man." They, t- I caught a guy taking the boot off. I put a lock in the center of the boot. Uh huh. He had unsnapped, undid it on both sides, was trying to get the boot off the back. When I came out of the restaurant, and he's looking at me while he's trying to yank it off. I go, "It's locked." <laughs> he goes, "Oh," <laughs> and he sorry. just slapped. He was like, "Oh, sorry." No fingerprints on that one. Yeah. Dad. <laughs> I saw the guy. I was like, "I, you know, I don't have a gun. You've already gone through the car." <laughs> yeah I, I, anytime anytime something like that happens i mean i mean we've seen a lot of shit in the bar bar industry i know john millennials led led a pretty charmed life with his uh crappy kias and uh i don't know i don't know how, recovered I don't know vehicles just you know <laughs> you figure out why it's called the moon roof <laughs> I'm gonna take a dump in your car. You leave it open. <laughs> you you always thought it was to look at the moon from inside the car out. <laughs> it's the other way around, bro. <laughs> I don't know how people just like like take shit that's not theirs. And I say that as someone who cannot go to the grocery store without just like getting a handful out of the bulk bin aisle and walking oh, away. Oh, <laughs> instant karma gonna get you, John. Oh, the world oh, is full of all the people. Look at oh, that. Have you done that where you just take a straw and you can get all the soup you want from that little? <laughs> Unmanned, unmanned buffet counter. They now shove down all our throats. It's like I just read a thing where it said, "Are those safe? Those things at the supermarket where it's like Whole a Foods, Whole Foods that you guys don't have it up there, but they have they have like seven stations with with everything. Yeah, yeah, but with a straw, you just lean over. Yeah, and, yeah. Oh, all the chicken bisque you can drink. They have spoons right there. I don't know why you're nah, using straw. Yeah, it looks like you're stealing their food, John. Yeah, John, that's their spoon. You bring in your straw. And it just got in the way of your air passage. Oh, I did drop my straw in your soup. I'm sorry. Could you get me a new straw? I don't have time to steal one tablespoon at a time. I need to get a straw in there. Oh, get three straws. You could do, mix three soups in your mouth. Then you could later do marketing and say, we should make spam make a name in nuts. Oh, there we go. Like all of our grocery stores here have a uh, olive bar, which is just a weird thing to me because I've never – I've never been to a place and been like, where is the olive bar? I need olives right now. And somehow over the last year, every single grocery store in this town has like uh, five types of olives. Yeah, just go on uh, online and look at what one of those uh, those uh, catering stations cost. Just 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 the cost of that thing to fucking sell ladles full of olives. It's it's crazy. Josh. I. I love the olive bar. I know you do, Becky. I do. I do. I do a hot olive uh, hors d'oeuvre, and I need it. Becky Becker's here with the uh, yeah. differing opinion yeah. on the olive bar. <laughs> count she point, is the count the olive bar. point, counterpoint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she roasts them, and they're amazing. I bet she, they are, but that's not how you get them at the fucking joint. 
No, you got you got to completely sterilize them because it's filthy. I mean, yeah. think about it. You stuck your hand in I there. Put a, I put a black light on the olives every time I go by. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, he leaves his car locked, and yeah, he's worried about putting olives in his mouth. Very worried. Well, in in Bisbee, I'm constantly I'm I'm trying to find a new property put to to put the uh, merchandise store in, and I can't find anything. But I, I'm now looking at at different uh, businesses in old old Bisbee that I've never noticed before. And I'm like, dude, we're moving to Mexico. Well, Don't I'm, worry. I'm telling you, man, it's it's it oh. might be easier. There is a fucking olive oil store in in Bisbee that's been there for years. Oh, and guess what they sell, guys? Olive oil. Hey, you got any olives? Nope. Air. We yeah. sell olives and some jellified cocaine. Maybe that's it. Yeah. <laughs> some jelly. You coke. thought it was. Yeah. <laughs> I but I don't know how they fucking stay in business. No, that's the part of business you don't get, Greg. I guess not. There's when we get down there, we'll explain how business works, Greg. It's really easy. All we're gonna do is be a nonprofit, take huge deductions, <laughs> and a lot of workplace injuries. <laughs> I gotta go to Costa Rica for my back. (laughs) This olive oil store is just a write-off. We don't really sell any olive oil. Oh, it says here a guy slipped on uh, olive oil. That's what I sell. (laughs) He slipped on olive oil. Well, have you considered putting it somewhere else? Yes, next door. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. There is a uh, there is a trendy olive oil store in the uh, in the mall. I'm sure it's a chain. uh, Oil and vinegar. Is the name and they <laughs> do they have vinegar? No, nope, no, nope, just olive vinegar. oil, <laughs> vinegar. <laughs> that's my cousin. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Doesn't when olive oil turns rancid, isn't it vinegar? No, I would think no. that rumor <laughs> that rumor could stick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want vinegar, just buy my olive oil and let it sit out for a while. Yeah. Eventually, it'll be vinegar. Do like I do. Just leave it in a vat in the yard. <laughs> Uh, but that place is uh, really expensive. I know we've gotten Stephanie's mom some uh, mm. some fancy some fancy oils. Ooh, and... you mean fancy bottles? Yeah, yeah exactly. Bottle. Yeah, yeah. They all come you from can, one big fucking bring, vat. You can bring your own bottle in, but I'm not sure how uh, strict of a definition of bottle like it has to be. I don't know if I can bring in like an old cowboy boot and be like, I'll take the jalapeno oil. <laughs> uh, we should test that. That's actually really funny. <laughs> He's walking out with like a balloon full. <laughs> or bring in a lady slipper. <laughs> just go, I just need enough to coat the inside. <laughs> <laughs> My friend's on the paleo diet. <laughs> I don't want to be stay current events on you, Greg. Okay. But two minutes ago, you wouldn't know this, but there was just a riot at the Seward Maxim Security Prison. Uh, Seward, right uh, just uh, just a little, little outside, two hours outside of uh, Anchorage. Seward? Well, it's closer now if they got out. <laughs> yeah. Well, Greg, those guys will you, tell us how, how long it takes to run to Anchorage. <laughs> Greg, if you get this podcast up uh, in the next hour, we'll beat all the television stations <laughs> with this news. Yeah, 43 inmates took, took part in the riot at the Maxim Security Prison. Uh, it's starting to seem like an Arab Spring, doesn't it, John? Yeah, th- and this is where uh, – this is the prison that uh, the Butcher Baker – uh, murder was until he died yeah. last last year. Last year? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, Alaska. Had, that's the only maximum security prison in Alaska. Is there? Yeah. In and, the Seward. And you get to see it when you go on the uh, the, <laughs> yeah, the, way, the glacier <laughs> cruise. They <laughs> point it out yeah. because that's, it's between two glaciers. It's, it's one of the features. It's, it's actually America's <laughs> America's most scenic maximum security prison. <laughs> mm-hmm. But they put pictures of Ohio on the windows just to tease the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't know where and, they're at. Uh, I think it's the prison that, like, there's an old movie starring uh, John Voight and Eric Roberts where they escape from prison and then uh, have to travel through Alaska. And I think that's uh, where they escape from. From the, the, the maximum security in Seward? Yeah. That would seem like the hardest they, one to ever escape, escape from. I mean, I, I mean, guess they could, there's if, nothing if they out escape, there. I'm sure they can get a job on a fishing boat in, like, yeah. five minutes. Don't they check for teardrop tattoos before you get on a fishing boat? The more, the better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they think it was gang related. Oh, you think? Yeah, they think it was. I don't know what gang though, because that's the thing. Is yeah, I don't. It was it the M thirteens or the 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 Kotzebue Niners? <laughs> I don't. Kotzebue Diners Club is that what you said? Yeah. Kotzebue Diners. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
There is a, uh, you know that show Gangland? We've pr- talked about the Gangland episode of Anchorage, haven't we? Uh, I don't remember. I've, I've never seen that if, show. If not, there's a, the A&E show Gangland. There's an Anchorage episode ba- that's all about the uh, Samoan gang. I forgot what they were called, but it's very Alaskan where it just seems like uh, they heard about a, a gang in a bigger city and were like, we're, we're them. Yeah. <laughs> but, and like the other, the main gang doesn't know about it, but we're with them. They co-opted their name. And their cred, yeah. their street, street cred is what just, they wanted. Just like Seahawks fans in Alaska. they <laughs> The Seahawks don't give a fuck about Alaska, <laughs> but they have, they have a lot of fans up here. Oh, my God. I just got hungry. I had to eat a Spam. A Spam oh. uh, macadamia nut. Well, we're going to be frying up some BLSs and... Uh... <laughs> Or wait, no, it's bacon spam. So it's um, SLTs. SLTs, yeah, we're making some SLTs. I really wanted to take that. I wanted, I wanted us to all have three different flavors, but that bacon one looked good, definitely. Yeah, oh, that's gonna be good. Yeah, yeah. That's, we were doing the masubi with the rice and the uh, the seaweed wrap and uh, some egg and a little and a slice of a spam on there. Really good. Once again, from the Shell Station. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> Greg's gas station <laughs> finds. Wow. I'm telling you, man. You've listened to an episode of Near the Wild. I'm Matt Becker on Alder Drive. Alder, ask for it by name. And I'm John Norris, uh, also on Alder Drive, my favorite uh, street named after a tree. And this is Greg Shaley from Bisbee, Arizona, portioning out my spam macadamia nuts because it's a long time till I get back to Hawaii. <laughs> oh, there it is. Our, our can sounds way fuller yeah. than yours. <laughs> As I'm eating more. You've been listening to the Near the Wild podcast with Matt Becker, John Norris, and Greg Shaley. Recorded in Anchorage, Alaska on Matt Becker's Backyard Bus. Produced and engineered in Bisbee, Arizona by Shaley. You've listened to another episode of Near the Wild. This is, uh, wait.